What is up everyone? I hope you're doing well. Binary Tech Labs here and the goal today is to teach you how to set up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi as the primary connection. I'm sure there are many use cases for setting up Wi-Fi as the primary connection. In my case, I want to have quick and easy access to the USB and GPIO ports on my Pi in front of me at my bench without having to run a cable back to my router. While Home Assistant does offer outstanding installation instructions, I found their site lacking when it comes to Wi-Fi setup, leaving you with just Home Assistant can work with Wi-Fi, but an Ethernet connection is more reliable and highly recommended. So trying to figure out how to get it set up on Wi-Fi can be a bit frustrating. So I'll walk you through the steps I took to get it working. All links to the hardware and software I use, plus recommendations, will be included in the description below. So let's go. As I mentioned, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4, 4GB model, but any Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 will work. And because this is just my lab Pi for tinkering, I'll be using a micro SD card. But be warned, if you want to use this as your permanent setup, just keep in mind that micro SD cards have a limited amount of read-write operations. And the last thing you want to deal with is having to reinstall and reconfigure your Home Assistant setup when the micro SD card breaks, which it will. As a result, if this is going to be a permanent setup for you, I strongly advise you to use, at a minimum, a USB thumb drive. Or, I can recommend using an Argon 1 M.2 case, or GeekPi's DeskPi Pro V2 case, both of which allow you to utilize M.2 SATA compatible SSD drives and look great wherever you end up putting them. Before we begin, at a minimum, you will need a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi power supply, a micro SD card, and a USB micro SD card reader, if you are using a micro SD card. If you run into any issues, it is nice to have a keyboard and monitor for troubleshooting as well. So throughout the video, I will refer to our installation medium as an SD card. But if you're using another device, like a USB thumb drive or an M.2 SATA compatible SSD, just use that instead. The steps for setting up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi are the same for all versions of Raspberry Pi, with exception, of course, to the image you used, which is going to be based on the model you choose. Once you're ready to install Home Assistant, you will need to write the image to an SD card. This can be done either using a program called Belena Etcher or Raspberry Pi Imager. I recommend using Raspberry Pi Imager as it is the easiest way I've found. Raspberry Pi Imager is a utility like Belena Etcher. And if you want, you can use the images I've linked from GitHub. But now you can pick the Home Assistant software directly from Raspberry Pi Imager. The links that I provide from GitHub, if you're going to use Belena Etcher, just copy them in here and then click OK. However, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager, so I'm just going to close this. So with Raspberry Pi Imager open, we can select Home Assistant Software, choose OS, and scrolling down to Other Specific Purpose OS, you'll see Home Assistant. Inside, you will see an image based on the model, one for a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400, and one for a Raspberry Pi 3. Since I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4, I will choose this one. Before you do insert your SD card into the computer, I like to try to select the device so I can be sure which device I will select once the SD card is inserted. The reason being is, once we tell it to write, it will erase the device you've selected, you've been warned. So under storage, I have nothing here. And if I go ahead and insert my SD card and choose it again, you can see the SD card shows up. But before we click right, let's make a change to how Imager will handle the SD card once it finishes verifying the newly written image. This will save us a bit of time of having to eject and reinsert the SD card. Just press Control, Shift, and X on your keyboard. This will take us into the advanced options. 
we can change these settings for this session only or to use always. I'm just going to leave it on this session only. Now, most of these settings are not going to apply to us. However, there is one at the bottom under persistent settings, eject media when finished. We're going to go ahead and uncheck that and click save. Now we can write and in a few minutes we'll have a bootable SD card with Home Assistant installed in it. So I will just click write and this is the warning that tells you that everything on that SD card will be erased so make sure if it's got information on it that you need that it is not on there. Just click yes. I will stop the video and come back to you once this has written. Okay, so welcome back. Home Assistant has finished writing and I'm using Ubuntu. So the process that I'm going to use to get the uh, Wi-Fi configuration onto the SD card may differ a little bit for you if you're using Windows. I'm not gonna be able to show you exactly how to get the Wi-Fi configuration onto your SD card, but I can show a couple of the errors that are gonna pop up. I've just taken some screen grabs from a virtual machine um, of Windows. Uh, it didn't record very well, so that's why I'll only use a screenshot of it, so I apologize. So once you try to go over to your file explorer and look for the SD card, um, you may get an error that pops up in Windows like this over here. So whatever you do, don't click format, just hit cancel. There are partitions that Windows is not going to be able to read. So once you've cleared those errors, you're going to start to navigate over to a device. Uh, the drive is going to be called Hass OS dash boot. And like I said, I'm using Linux, so I'm going to have to mount the Windows partition first, but the steps from that point on will be the same. I'll just go over and do that first. So this is the partition here that I'm going to have to mount. change directory into that new mount. So in the Hasp OS boot, this is what you're going to look for on Windows. You'll see these files in here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a folder named config, all in caps. And then we're going to CD into that. Then we're going to make a directory called network, lowercase this time. And inside of here, we are going to create a file called my network. In Windows, you're going to create a text file and call it it'll be my dash network.txt. You're going to add the configuration which I've put into the description and then save it. Once you save it, you're going to click, not double click, but you'll click twice on the file 
so that you can change the name and then you're going to delete the .txt and hit enter and that will pop up with an error saying are you sure you want to do this it may become unusable if you do just click yes it's okay so now I will edit a file I'm just going to copy in from the description and I'll go ahead and explain it. So here's your connection. It's going to be wireless. For the wireless, the SSID here, you'd put in your own SSID. Uh, if your network is hidden, just uncomment this line. Mine is not hidden. So I will leave that commented out. This section here is for the wireless security. Where I am doing this video from, currently I'm on an open public network that my work provides me. So that's why all of this is commented out. Yours will most likely look like this. And here, where the PSK equals, this is where you're going to change and put in your password. I will just go ahead and comment this out. Now for the IP address, right now the method is set to auto or DHCP. If you want a static IP address, just comment out this first line of method and uncomment out these three lines here and you can add your IP address and the DNS that you wish to use. I'm just gonna leave mine as DHCP. Save the file, exit, and there we can see the file. Actually, there's one thing that I forgot to show you. At the top here, this UUID, it's a version 4 UUID, and in the description, I have provided a link to generate your own unique UUID. I do suggest that you do that. Now, just save the file, and then you can eject the SD card. All right, so now before you boot up the Pi, make sure that you have a keyboard and monitor plugged in. This will save us some time of having to shut down and plug these devices back in if we have any issues. And it is also another way that you can get your IP address or connect to the Wi-Fi. So we will just go ahead and boot up the Raspberry Pi. This should take about five minutes to unpack and install the software and then after it has done that, we should be able to access the Home Assistant at hasio.local and the port we're going to use is 8123. I'll just pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so we're back. So as we can see, our configuration did work because I do have an IP address under WLAN0 and it is there on the screen. And additionally, you can see the home assistant .local port 8123. So I apologize, it isn't hasio.local, it is home assistant.local. But let's just say that didn't work. In order to connect your Wi-Fi from the command line, we'll just type login. And from this point, we can see whether or not the Wi-Fi is enabled. So we just type in the command NMCLI and then type radio. And we can see that Wi-Fi is enabled. So now we can scan and get a list of available connections with the following commands. So if for whatever reason your router was off, you needed to rescan the available networks, you just type NMCLI device Wi-Fi rescan and that will scan the available connections and then to list those out you just type NMCLI device Wi-Fi and there is a list of available Wi-Fi connections and with the following command you can connect to your Wi-Fi like this NMCLI device Wi-Fi connect and then quotes your SSID, whatever that happens to be. In my case, it's open underscore power. And then space, password. Again, password will be in quotes and your password will be the password for your Wi-Fi network. 
just hit enter and it will connect to that Wi-Fi. All right, so before I jump back over to my computer, it is worth mentioning that you can get the IP address also from your router if you have access to it. Okay, if we open up a web page and we go to that address that it gave us, Home Assistant, we should be able to see the landing page for Home Assistant. Uh oh if you're getting this error, you'll have to use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi instead as your network is not configured for multicast DNS or MDNS for short. This is just a protocol that resolves host names to IP addresses within a small network that does not include a local name server. I knew I would be getting this error as the network I am on does not support MDNS. This is not a problem. You can get the IP address, as I mentioned, from your router. So since we already know our IP address, we will just put that in and hit enter. And there we have the onboarding page for Home Assistant. So we are connected now wirelessly to Home Assistant through our Raspberry Pi. You can go through the onboarding process, putting in your name, username, and creating a password. However, this is where I will leave you in the video. I hope you found some value in what you saw today. I'd love to see your questions or concerns in the comment section below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.